crystal gems will always save the day. And if you think we can't, it's because we're on fucking hiatus again. <laughs> Actually, no, it, it's not going to be that long of a hiatus because there are three episodes coming up this month. Oh, yeah. Uh, 10th, 17th, and the 24th. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, uh, I heard about that. But, I mean, fucking Christ, does it not? It, does it seem like this show goes on hiatus constantly? The thing is, I heard something about how they are planning to go back onto like a regular weekly schedule, and they said that last year, and they were on a weekly schedule for a little while, and then they went on hiatus again, and then we had a Stephen bomb that was leaked early. And then we went on hiatus again. And it's like, oh, we're coming back to a weekly schedule. I don't believe you. Stay on a weekly schedule for a whole season, and then maybe I'll believe you. I'm wondering if it has to do with production times, because they have a very stylized art style and very good animation. So I'm just wondering how long it actually takes to make an episode. Then again, it takes like 10 months to make an episode of Family Guy and... Well, I don't know that much about their release schedule. Well, first of all, episodes are worked on simultaneously. Uh, while one episode is being, or at least in a con- in a competently made show like Family Guy or Friendship is Magic, while one episode is being animated, another one is being uh, is being storyboarded, another one is being uh, is having the voice the dialogue recorded, and another one's being written. So it's this constant cycle of production. Every every step on the production team is uh, is always doing something. It's not like the same people who write are also the animators. They have different people for that. And even if that were the case, most TV shows are produced uh, season by season. So it's like before a season even airs, the uh, it's already been completed. Like, by the time season seven starts to air, uh, French Miss Magic, by the time that starts to, to air, it will have been completed. Like, the last episode will have already been done. Like, the Lord of... Like, uh, during this year, I believe, they... Like, when Season 7 starts to air, they will have already started, or probably be well into, production on Season 8, if there is a Season 8. And so, yeah, it's it's entirely down to Cartoon Network deciding when to release them. That's it. Like, people, people uh, have the impression that uh, TV show is done like YouTube, where you make something, and then you upload it, and then you make something, and then you upload it. No. Uh, TV is produced much more professionally than most YouTubers. And you could either be competent, like the people who release seasons of Milo Pony and have them come in, like, week after week after week. Or you could be like Fox and Firefly and release the episodes completely out of order and no idea when and the next episode will come. That's what killed that show. I have yet to see anything of Firefly. It's a good show. But uh, Steven Universe sort of has... A middle problem. It's like, they're coming out in order, but they're not coming out, like, either quickly enough or they're just having little spurts of it. Well, I think the Steven bombs are a big problem. I mean, think about, think about a Steven Universe had a, had a normal schedule. Like, okay, there's, so there's 52 weeks in a year. Most TV shows tend to go on hiatus during the summer. So that, you know, producers can take, like, their va- their accumulated vacation time or whatever reason. They generally go on a break, on a few months break during the summer. And so you've got to you've gotta smatter out over 40 weeks, about 26 episodes. So you'll notice that even with Friendship is Magic, there's the occasional week where there's just no new episode. There's, like, a rerun. Steven Universe likes to do the Steven Bombs, which is five episodes, five weeks of content... Uh, which, for any normal show, would generally stretch them about maybe seven or eight weeks. So five weeks, uh, so about seven or eight weeks of content all released, all released in one week, in a massive burst. So yeah. That kind of reminds me of uh, some TV shows, like back in the... Zane, you cut out. And he dropped out of Discord. Oh no. Oh boy. Oh, he's still online. Just dropped out of the call. And now we're alone. Oh, now we're alone. (laughs) I'm so keeping this in. (laughs) You should. Your growling is sexy. 
You're just doing this because it makes me giggle. Oh, yeah. I mean, your giggling is cute. We are both sh- <laughs> we are both shameless flirts with each other. I think what someone said on the last po- on the last podcast is that um, uh, Lily and Lizzie are always like five are always like five seconds away from just fucking constantly. Hey, he's back. Yay. You were right. It went down. <laughs> I told you. I <laughs> I'm was on right. my phone again. I told you I was right. All right. So uh, you All were right, saying. So what was I saying? Uh, something about, um... I just got done talking about how, uh, the Steven Bomb splurges out a massive amount of content in one go. They did, they used to do this, like, back in the 80s and 90s, where they put, like, five episodes out in the week. Um, the biggest example I can think of is Power Rangers did, like, they introduced, like, the Green Ranger, and they did, like, a five-part, uh, arc, and they released every episode during the week. So, there is precedence for this. But the thing is, Power Rangers was produced, like, en masse. Like, each season was almost 70 episodes. Yeah, uh, well, most TV shows, most uh, especially animated TV shows, uh, generally have 26 episodes per season. And the problem is, uh, of course, Steven Universe has to keep going on hiatuses because Cartoon Network likes to release them in these big, chunky bursts, which means you chew through almost two months' worth of content in a single week. In just five days, that's two months. That's two months worth of uh, of uh, of air dates just gone, just vanished into the ether. It's just gone. The only credence I can see for that is, uh, with the most recent one, it was five episodes of a connecting arc in the story. It was like watching a big or a little movie. But even then, you have the problem of all the episodes around Beach City, which I actually like, but they don't push the story forward so you'll have a Steven bomb but at the end of it the plot hasn't really moved forward much or at least usually not in the case of the last one this was especially the case with the summer of Steven where they had like a new episode every day for three weeks I think um and most of it was junk most of it was just nothing filler episode filler episode filler episode filler episode filler episode then you got bismuth Beta and Earthlings. Was that part of the Summer uh, summer of Steven? I think so. If not, it was like... It, it was I think like, it, I think it might have been. They had the Summer of Steven, and then they started releasing them on like a weekly schedule, and then they stopped again. Right, I think it was when they came back to the weekly schedule. Right. But yeah, I mean, the Summer of Steven is, ju- is like a bigger part of that problem. Like three weeks. That's uh, three weeks of new episodes. That's 21 episodes. That's a whole year burned away in two months that's a year's worth of video uh, of uh, of episodes gone absolutely gone and so then you go back on the weekly schedule but then there's just a point where it's like well we're out of completed episodes we got to go on hiatus again and cartoon network could fix all of this if they would just fuck off if they would just fuck off and stick to a weekly schedule with the inter with the occasional week of no new episode we wouldn't have this fucking problem. We wouldn't have these massive, constant, unending hiatuses. Because I guarantee you, they're gonna go on hiatus again. They're not gonna stay to a weekly schedule. They keep saying they're going to, but they won't. Cartoon Network's gonna put it on hiatus and then bring it back with a fucking Steven bomb. And we wouldn't run into this problem of people just... People are starting to get pissed off. That's what made me want to talk about it on the podcast this week, as well as on this week's Glass of Water, is people are starting to get really pissed off about it. It's just like, oh, another Stephen Bomb. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, Cartoon Network released it early, leaked it early on their app, fucking over their own ratings. Oh, for fuck's sake, Cartoon Network. And another problem that it has with it, um, uh, oh, wording is hard today. <laughs> for MLP, when a new episode comes out and there's a week until the next one, you get to see the splurge of fans picking over the episode, making fan art, obsessing over the little details. But if you have a whole bunch of episodes, then... The fans are just overloaded. You don't know what to focus on. Yeah, it's a double-ended. It's a double-ended problem, Giggity. The Steven the Steven bombs cause every in, no individual episode stands out. In a typical weekly release schedule, every episode gets time to you know get people's attention. It gets time to breathe. It gets time to be absorbed and whatnot. And then then you've you've got a week to move on to the next one. But when you've got these big fucking bursts, generally people only focus on the last one. Like think about it. Even when we were talking about the about the the Stephen Bomb two weeks uh, the like two podcasts ago, 
we were mostly focused on that last episode, weren't we? I'd say we we had it spread out a bit evenly, but we were talking we were talking about it like it was one big chunk and not each individual episode. We were skipping around. Yeah, we were we were looking at uh, particular particular events, but the majority of our focus was on uh, Yellow Diamond and Blue Diamond, and you know that musical number. Like we ha- we had that at the start. And then we did it again at the end. So that was where most of the focus was. And that that uh, that ends up happening with the release. No, uh, like you could have a really good episode of Steven Universe. But if it's in the middle, if it's smack in the middle of the Steven bomb, it's not going to stand out. No one's paying attention to it. They're mostly going to pay attention to the one that's that's uh, that's biggest in their memory. And that's going to be the most recent one. I mean, I would argue uh, the week of uh, Sardonyx. Like the one that introduced Sardonyx and went through that whole that whole uh, issue with uh, uh, Ruby and Sapphire and Am- Amethyst dealing with her issues. I-, I felt like each individual episode there was able to stand out, but that's just because each individual episode was its own thing. Well, that also well that benefited from the fact that Keystone Motel was a really good episode. But the episode where Pearl and Garnet finally mend fences and get themselves out of that crushing death trap wasn't. So that that's that's the that's that's the general outlier. Uh, even when uh, even when uh, when analysts are doing their top five or top ten episodes of of a given season, in general, you can guarantee that the finale is going to be on there somewhere because it's the one that sticks out most in people's minds. It's like, what's the best episode? Well, the last one I saw was the finale, and that had a villain in it, and that had a lot of adventure. 10 out of 10. There we go. There we go. But the second problem that I was uh, that I wanted to highlight is the fact that when you have this m- these several-month hiatuses, you end up with a fandom that has nothing to do. That has absolutely nothing to do, and they just they they fall asleep, they drift away, they go and do other they go and do other things. The more and more and more we have these massive hiatuses, the faster and faster and faster the audience goes from being excited about a new Steven bomb to angry about the fact that we're doing more fucking Steven bombs, so we get a burst and then nothing, to just getting bored, and then they go and watch other shows. Star vs. the Forces of Evil is on, and that's run by a competent studio. This isn't an issue that's unique to Cartoon Network. I mean, as I said, um, Gravity Falls pulled this sort of BS during the finale of season two. It's like they released like the first part of the finale. Then it was a two month gap before part two. And then another two month gap before they released part three and four. And even then I'm like, what the hell are you guys doing? I didn't even bother watching parts one and two until they were marathoning the entire season working up to the actual finale. Yeah, that's the first I'm hearing of it because I watched them all after the fact. But, you know, when it comes to the series finale, those you would want to release all together, like the last few episodes of Avatar, because that's a big... It's like one big episode. I don't think I'd be... I would mind the Steven Bombs if they came like one a year... And they were just dealing with, like, the finale of a really big arc. Yeah, the Steven Bomb as, like, a season finale, that would be an interesting idea. I mean, you you would uh, you would probably have to have a break before you go to the season finale. But that would be fine. The problem is, we're doing only Steven Bombs. Or, like, these big events. Steven Bomb, the Summer of Steven. Just release the show. And I often wonder... Cartoon Network clearly has no faith in Steven Universe as a show itself. Absolutely none. They look at Steven Universe and say, we cannot air this as a normal show because it's shit. So we've got to make it, we've got to really wrangle up this hype. We've got to really just just drum up all this fucking hype. And if you look at, say, the first Steven Bomb, it worked. It was a big event. People came in. They uh, they got a big surge of ratings. But then it's like you look at the uh, other Steven Bombs and the ratings just kind of even out, which is admittedly a hard piece of data to analyze because a lot of Steven Bombs were just consecutive. There's a Steven Bomb, then nothing, then a Steven Bomb, then nothing. So we don't have normal ratings to go by. Then you come to the Summer of Steven, where ratings were pretty low on average, except for Bismuth, which shot up. 
to about 2 million viewers. Because they advertised it as like this, they advertised it as a big event. Yeah, they advertised the Summer of Steven as a big event, but it was Bismuth that was the highlight of that advertisement. I, I meant specifically Bismuth was drummed up as a big event. And you're right, it was the focus of the advertisement, so. And the fact that it was a two-parter that was actually like squished together into one episode. Like, you, Steven Universe episodes are usually 11 minutes long. The Bismuth episode wa was a full 22 minutes. They didn't split it up into like a part one and a part two. They just aired it together. I remember when I first started watching Steven Universe, I had the full first season and I was just sort of, uh, f and I was sort of uh, binging through it, which is admittedly very unhealthy, but I was binging through it. And I remember distinctly uh, thinking, wow, these episodes, these stories are strangely rushed and they feel very empty like the episodes feel very empty of stuff going on compared to like other shows and it was only until i started doing that i decided to actually like sit down and write an in a minute on uh fuck what was it um jailbreak that i actually said that I actually realized oh these are 11 minutes long no wonder they feel so fucking rushed and short and empty so Bismuth, Bismuth wasn't a two-parter. Bismuth was just a normal episode. It was like Bismuth was was when they just decided to do something normal for once. But I honestly do think that uh, Cartoon Network has no faith in the series in the series at all to maintain viewership, and so they they're constantly drumming up uh, this hype because that, that's what the Steven bombs are. They starve the audience for content and then make even the most mundane releases an event. Either that, or they want Steven Universe to die and they because that's what shows do usually when a show is about to be cancelled it has a really weird release time like uh, releases at a time where its audience especially if its audience is younger isn't awake like late at night or super early on a Saturday morning or it could be more clever and have the Stephen phones which don't get the, the show the ratings that it deserves uh but it looks like it's going to drum up hype. Maybe Cartoon Network just wants the show to peter out because it's uh, getting more and more obvious with its LGBT themes. I don't think so. Cartoon Network really, never really struck me as that regressive. Then again, they did cancel Teen Titans entirely on the basis that it was popular with girls instead of boys. No, that was Young Justice that they canceled. Because it was popular with girls. Oh. Oh, I thought it was Teen Titans. Uh, no. Um, I can't remember what, what Teen Titans deal was. But I remember Young Justice was the big one that they canceled. And everyone was basically in an uproar about it. Like, there was this big movement last year to get it a third season on Netflix. And it worked. We're getting a third season. So, but I don't think it's gonna. I don't think they would uh, try it. I mean, look, if they were gonna, if they were gonna kill the, if they were going to kill the show for that. I don't see why you would kill the show when you could just executively meddle. Just walk into Sugar's office and go, yeah, this shit has to go. We don't want this. We, we don't want this in the show. It goes or you go. I mean, that's the case with a lot of shows. I mean, uh, uh, Deborah Joy Levine, the creator of Lois and Clark, didn't want Lois and Clark to get married until the series finale. ABC disagreed. They wanted Lois and Clark to get married sooner and have, like, another season of them being married. Uh, that resulted in Levine, who was the creator of the series. She was, like, the Lauren Faust to Lois and Clark. She was, she was fired. She was kicked off the show and someone else took her place. Which turned out to be a good idea because the final season of Lois and Clark being uh, married and having husband and wife banter was fucking brilliant. There were creative differences between Hasbro and Lauren Faust. Now, Faust didn't get fired because Faust did what Faust always does and took her ball and went home the minute she didn't get her way. So I don't see, like, if this was something that was like really, if this was, if the LGBT themes were the big reason why uh, Cartoon Network seems to be trying to kill Steven Universe, it would have, like, if I was in Cartoon Network's position, I would have just fired Rebecca Sugar and just put someone else in charge. You would fire Rebecca Sugar anyway. Well, yeah, I mean, if I was in Cartoon Network's position, I would have fired uh, Rebecca Sugar uh, for reasons other than uh, LGBT themes. I mean, like, yeah, if I was in charge of Cartoon Network, I would basically be, let's add more gay. But I would be like, uh, Sugar, you're still going because your writing is shit. Yeah, like, you, you could... You cut out all the filler and you lose half the episodes. There's that many. Well, that's the thing. It's like you cut out the filler. It's like basically you get a filler script and you throw it out. It's like, no, go tell the actual fucking story. 
If I was the, lead, the if I was the executive producer of Steven Universe, I would just say, okay, all this Beach City crap, it's gone. It's going, and we're going to tell the actually interesting story. But no, we're getting another episode about Ronaldo. Fucking Christ, why? Fucking Ronaldo. All right, anyway, you're, you you were saying, Lizzie? Um, if I ever rewatch Steven Universe from beginning to end, I'm probably just going to make a comprehensive list for new coming fans. Here are the episodes that you need to watch to get the story. They'll introduce something new about how gems work, they'll advance the plot, or they'll introduce a new character or have an important uh, character development development moment. All the other ones you can skip over. These are the important ones. Yeah. I mean, you could basically make a decent two-season show with all the episodes of Steven Universe that matter. But that that actually brings me to another point, is that one of the... I, the, um, the filler People of Beach City episodes would bother me a lot less... If the show was running on a weekly schedule, if they weren't constantly going on hiatus and basically just going, oh my God, when are you going to have something new? Hey, we have something new. Great. What is it? Eh, just some dicking around in Beach City. Wow. Fuck you. That's why I said last time when we were running through the Steven bomb, how I wouldn't mind them as much. I mean, I'd still mind them, but I wouldn't mind them as much if they did like Steven bombs of the actual plot and then maybe sprinkle in a couple of filler episodes. Yeah. Like, in between. Oh, yeah. But yeah, just cutting them out altogether would be the better option. Yeah. Um, yeah, that really does just come back to the big problem of uh, of the Steven Bomb. And Cartoon Network, they're deliberately drumming up hype because they know they've got very little to work with. And so they are deliberately starving play- uh, f- players. Fucking Christ. Uh, they're deliberately starving viewers and fans alike uh, in order to basically say, new Steven Universe, and just immediately get cheers and cheers and cheers and ratings bursts and so, like surges of, uh, of higher ratings to pull as much advertising uh, dollars out of the show as they possibly can. And and then it, it just goes to sleep again. Like this is a, this is a very calculated thing that Cartoon Network is doing. And it also leads, it also creates... And what I think is the biggest problem Steven Universe has, very critically undiscerning fans. Extremely critically undiscerning fans. Because if you look at most of the episodes from an objective point of view, most of the episodes, especially the ones centering on people like Lars and Sadie and, fuck, Ronaldo, they're pretty shit. But when that's all you get, that's all you've gotten for the last few months, when it's like, we've just come back from a month-long hiatus... Here's an episode about Lars and Sadie doing nothing. That will make even that will that will make basically any casual viewer just go finally something. Oh my god, something. It's like when World of Warcraft has like a months long content drought and then suddenly the pre-patch, which is generally just class changes, is this big massive event. It's like, "Oh my god, a new patch. This is amazing." Doesn't matter that that patch basically contains very little. Or even like if it takes longer to write the gem war episodes or the character focused episodes than it does to create the filler episodes, then you would have even more excuse if you had a weekly schedule to release the filler episodes. Like, hey, where's the plot driven stuff? Uh, we're still working on that. Here, have a filler episode just to keep you going. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, filler episodes are generally to fill the time because you don't have enough story or it's like, well, we were uh, we were contracted for 26 episodes. We need some stuff. But the whole it, it loses its entire purpose when the filler is generally just no releases. Just nothing. That's usually the point of filler in like in anime. Uh they they have like a set number of episodes that they have to make. If it's 26 episodes and the plot only fills up like 24, there's going to be two filler episodes just to meet the quota. Yeah, exactly. But I mean why do you even need filler episodes when your filler is, you're just off the air. You've just gone to sleep. Again, you're in constant hibernation. This is actually, you know what? I only just realized that this reminds me of like this Friendship is Magic story I read several years ago. Where Spike grows up and goes into hibernation for like 50 years, then 100 years, and then like a million years, and then a billion years, to the point where he's asleep for a billion years, he wakes up for like a half an hour, and then he just goes back to sleep again for another billion years. And that's Steven Universe. 
It's just a big lumbering hibernating dragon that is getting so close to death. But yeah, it is, uh, it, it is deliberate hype mongering. That's what's going on. It's deliberate hype mongering and hype has a backlash. It will always have a backlash. Always. We're starting to see it with Silverquill. I mean, uh, how many, uh, you both, uh, you both saw the ask I got on Tumblr the other day, right? Uh, you get a lot of asks, yeah. so you're gonna have to be more specific. Uh, someone sent me an ask regarding, uh, Silverquill in the fact that, uh, Silver's, Silver's big draw is very detailed, interesting, nuanced looks at every individual episode. It's after, you know, after the fact. Okay, yeah. But that is take that has been taking an increasingly long, that has been taking longer and longer and longer and longer to the point where the last after the fact uh, episode review was three months ago. And a lot of people like to say it's, oh, it's because he's taking the time to make it as good as possible. Well, no, no, he's not. First of all, he has a day job. Second of all, he's making uh, after the facts on things that generally aren't what people want him to make. And I didn't really start talking about this until people started uh, complaining to me about it, which I don't know why you complain to me. I'm not his boss. And doing all these other things that all take away from the thing people actually want him to do. And so the waits get longer and longer and longer and longer and longer. But the quality of each episode review stays the same. Which means that, you know, people people are patient at first, but as we're starting to see, they're starting to get angry about it. Not to mention he's always going to conventions. Right, yeah, he goes off to every single fucking convention, always advertising, oh, I'm doing this really big panel, I'm doing After the Fact live on a panel with the with two other people who aren't as good, good of critics as me. It's like, dude, just don't go to a convention. Every single fucking one. I remember he did one convention announcement and people were just like, oh, will you fuck off? Whenever Equestria Daily announces like, oh, we're having a Rainbow Dash Day or Twilight Sparkle Day. And he releases a video like to tie in with that, like highlighting like each individual character. I'm okay with that. I mean, I, li I like talking about character and development and all that stuff. But I do think that should be a side thing to... His, regu his regular, like, after-the-fact stuff. Yeah, and those advertisements, those, like, uh, it's like, oh, we're having a Rarity Day or a Rainbow Dash Day. Those events showcase that Silver can get something done very quickly if he's actually bothers to do it. And so that most of the tediously long wait times, it's just him not working on it. He's just not doing it. He's doing other things, that and... That uh, that increase in wait time has no effect on the video's quality, which is something a lot of people can't really they they can't grapple with. They can't grapple with the idea that in between video releases, a person who makes content is doing other things, and so which leads to unfortunately hype, 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 hype. Oh, it's gonna be great, man! It's taken so long. This is gonna be great. People have been doing that with Half-Life 3. Oh, it's taking years to develop. It's going to be great. Bear in mind that Valve has never been working on it at all. Because they don't need to. They're, they're never going to. They're never going to make that. Uh, but people still go, oh man, Half-Life 3 is just going to be the greatest game ever made because it because it's taken like 10 years to come out. Eh, Duke Nukem Forever would like a word with you. Now, on the flip side of that, uh, last fall we did get two games that took like 10 years to come out because they were in development hell. Uh... Final Fantasy XV and The Last Guardian, which, despite their 10-year development time, were pretty okay games. Yeah, they were okay games. I think Kingdom Hearts 3 has probably been heading this off because when they announced that, because people were under the impression that, oh, Kingdom Hearts 3 is just being made constantly, but that was uh, headed off by the fact that they had other Kingdom Hearts games coming out. You know, you had 358 over two days, Birth by Sleep, Dream Drop Distance, a whole bunch of other games. And then when they finally announced Kingdom Hearts 3, it's like, yeah, we just started development on it. And so that sort of just staved off a lot of the hype. It's like, yeah, we haven't been working on it. We've been doing this other stuff. We haven't been working on it until now. And people like in my circle of friends like to complain about, oh, why didn't they just make Kingdom Hearts 3? Why did they have to make all these damn spinoffs? And I'm like, one, because most of the spinoffs were actually good. Stop complaining. And two... It's going to get here eventually. I mean, they they are developing it. They are giving us, like, like screenshots and trailers and saying, hey, yes, we are working on this. 
It's gonna come. And then you so and then you expand more stuff to incorporate into later uh, official games, quote unquote. Yeah, and I mean, like for all intents and purposes, either Birth by Sleep or Dream Drop Distance could have been considered Kingdom Hearts three because you know they built on the story uh, from where Kingdom Hearts uh, two left off. Um, well, okay, keep Birth by Sleep was a prequel, but Dream Drop Distance uh, did that. They did build on the idea and introduce new things. But that's what headed off the hype is the fact that, well, no, there's not like, there's not a, a, a we, we, we aren't making Kingdom Hearts 3. We might eventually decide to do that, but right now we're doing this and this and this. Kingdom Hearts had a, has had a rather, despite the extremely long wait time between Kingdom Hearts 2 and Kingdom Hearts 3, it's had a very consistent uh, release schedule. But with Silver... Uh, most of his audience comes for one very specific thing and he's not delivering on it and he hasn't been delivering on it. I don't think you could even call the last after the fact like a proper Silver Quill video because it was dominated by four other people, three of which aren't very good. I mean, I would totally, I would, I would be on board with a collab between Silver and Finn, but Keyframe, Lightning Bliss, Thespio? No, thanks. I mean, I, I thought, oh, Silver has a new video out. Oh, it's a five-person collab. And then I just left, and I didn't bother watching it. So, moral of the story, longer wait times don't mean better quality. Steven Universe's Steven Bombs aren't doing very well. Hype has a backlash, and they just need to release like a normal show. Get off your ass. That's, re that's really all it is. Get off your ass. I remember when I was, uh, when I was editing for, uh, Taking Too Seriously, every now and again, when people knew I was editing, people would go, it's like, hey, when's the next video coming out? P people think I had control of that because like, oh, hey, I'm the editor for Taking Too Seriously. Great. Hey, when's the next video coming out? When's the next video coming out? And then I think I, I took like a handful of different Tumblr posts back then and I reiterated it a couple days ago where it's like, look, I'm going to give you the honest truth. These things take me a day to make. If I had control of it, you would get a new Taking Too Seriously every day. But here's the reality. There's eight scripts waiting that the editors are waiting for. All of them are blank. Every single one of them. Eight episodes have reviews planned. Every script is blank. And they've been blank for weeks. He's just not working on them. He's doing streaming. He's doing other things. He's basically... he's. I think the thing that really pissed me off is the fact that he's streaming and taking donations from the stream specifically so uh, to pay his editor's salary. But his editors have no work to do. Why does he have so many editors if he doesn't have anything for even one of them to edit? I, I've, I've said that. I mean, I've said that before. I mean, he's got like four or five editors. He had like four. Yeah, he has four or five editors. And for some reason, whenever he does a top t a countdown video, he has 10 different editors working on it where one will do. Um, But he barely has any work for them to do. And... And, and Lizzie, you were in the call with me when this happened, he had the sheer fucking gall to complain about the fact that four of his five editors were really slow with editing and needed their fucking handheld. And I actually sat him down and I said, Josh, you're complaining about the speed of your editors, but you have eight scripts sitting here that haven't been worked on at all. You just haven't done it. If you're going to complain that, you're that the people working for you aren't fast enough, have your own fucking ass in gear, get off your lazy ass, and do some fucking work. We've kind, of, we've kind of gone off topic, but I feel like you needed to say that. No, I feel, I feel like this is very much on topic. No, it, 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 it is on topic because, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about Steven Bombs, but we're also kind of talking about hype culture. And, uh, of course, the way that YouTube audiences really get themselves hyped up because they think that they think that most YouTubers are working very, 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 very diligently. They're not. I mean, I know people are going to complain. Oh, you're bashing Josh. You're bashing Josh. You're bashing Josh and you're bashing silver. Yeah, why are you bashing so much? But the reality is it's like this might actually by just by some mutated freak chance, uh, actually benefit the both of them because I'm basically telling them that yes, this stuff could be done faster and be of the same quality. It's just that they're not doing it. It's not that they're taking a long time to make it. They've just fucked off to other things. And it's not like you're even saying that taking too seriously is bad. I mean, some of its episodes have its problems for sure. Like in uh, Do Princess's Dream of Magic Sheep, when he was saying, if you're having any kind of mental health issues, you should see a therapist, a counselor, a psychiatrist, or a priest. I mean, priests can uh, offer 
advice, or I don't know how to phrase this, but if you're struggling with any kind of moral dilemma, they do have... I mean, being a priest is being a professional in all things moral and spiritual, so... but they can't treat mental illnesses, and they're... Uh, they would probably recommend you to a doctor, but overall, I think taking too seriously is decent. Oh yeah, taking too seriously is uh, is a relatively good show. Uh, it v- it very frequently needs the editing shears taken to to its script. But overall, I mean, even when even when I had to take the editing shears to a script, it was only maybe once or twice per script, and it was generally just yeah, we're just gonna cut that out because you sound like a dick when you're saying that. And overall, we just make it better by throwing in a whole bunch of gags. But yeah, in general, it's a good series. After the Fact is a good series. And you know what? These could be great series if their respective creators would just move. Just get up and do some fucking work. And you know the ironic thing is? All of this supposed bashing you do of Josh and uh, any criticisms you have towards taking too seriously, it's always been for his benefit. Like... You're stopping him from saying things that will make him look like a dick and will hurt his reputation and standings on YouTube, and his videos have been far better because of you quote-unquote interfering. Like, everything that you've said about his work, if he just took that advice and took the criticism, then he and his content would be all the better for it. It's kind of ironic. I think there was only one time I ever adamantly got in Josh's face about uh, about content in a script. And it was the video about Spike, where he's kind of talking about the slavery angle. And he references Uncle Tom's Cabin by referencing the fact that the main characters were happy in their slavery. And I stepped right in and I said, and I, and I made, I made several points. First, I said, first of all, this is extremely fucking racist. That you can't, you can't go on and say this. If you have to prefix something with that, you, with uh, an assurance that you don't condone slavery, you are admitting that your own words are coming off very badly. Second of all, that's not Uncle Tom's Cabin. That's the minstrel show ver- pro-slavery version of it that has been going on since the fucking Civil War. The original was a very, very unsubtle Tarantino-esque anti-slavery novel. He wouldn't fucking listen. Absolutely wouldn't listen and argued with me about it. Well, I had Silver Quill and Dr. Wolf uh, look at it. And I said, all right, look, fine. If it's that important to you, fine. Take it to another editor. And he caved. He caved because he knew that it's like, well, I'm the best, I'm the best editor you have. And so if I just say, look, uh, I, I'm not, I, I can't sit here and let you do this to yourself. So just take it to another editor. And he caved. He gave in instantaneously. And even then, like that's something blatantly, that would be blatantly harmful to his reputation and his channel. And yeah, it's not just, it, it's not just harmful, it's bigoted, it's willfully ignorant, and it's wrong. Like, he's ma- he's making the wrong connection. Yeah, so he's hurting his- he would hurt his reputation, he would uh, hurt his review, and if he had also listened to why you were saying that this is wrong and you shouldn't uh, have to prefix your words like this, he would have been a better person because of it, because he would have- uh, looked at what he was saying and would have would have been like, oh, why am I saying this? I feel, I feel like I've been edged out of the conversation a bit. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, yeah, but um, yeah, I suppose, I suppose, I suppose at that point we really did just kind of get off topic. But uh, I well, actually no, because it, it's kind of kind of the point is that we 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 talk about this stuff and it was kind of like the it, it, I talk about this stuff because if people listen to me, their content would be better. Like it, like if you listened, if you listened to me, you would do better. I think it, uh, second opinions are definitely needed in, in like analysis like this. But you can't, you can't say, oh, if you listen to me like all the time, your work would be better. You are, you are. Everyone's apt to make mistakes, so that's why you need to share share your work around with people you trust to say, hey. Did, did I accidentally say something racist in this? And then you need to actually listen when someone says, yes, you did say something accidentally racist. Yeah. 
Um, I'm honestly like, uh, it's very clear, uh, especially in the Uncle Tom's Cabin example, Dr. Wolf and Silver Quill have clearly, I've either never read it or they've never read the actual book. They've only ever read the pro, the pro slavery rewrites of it. I've never even heard of Uncle Tom's Cavern, uh, Cabin. Uh, Uncle, Uncle Tom's Cabin is said to be the book that kicked off the Civil War. Huh. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, saying it's a book about uh, main characters who are happy in their slavery, when in reality the main characters grin and bear their slavery, that's, uh, that's a, that is a, that is a massive, um, that is a massively uh, bad uh, uh, connection to make. It's like saying Star Wars is pro-fascism. Which it's not. Yeah, it's not. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I know, obviously, it's like, if you listen to me all the fucking time, you would do better. No, I, what I mean is, so far, uh, people ask me for advice all the time. I give them advice, they don't take it, and then they're surprised when their problems aren't solved. It's like, Lily, how do I get my mother to respect my gender identity? Force her to. Don't, l- annoyingly correct her. Get in her face and just keep correcting her and correcting her and correcting her until she finally caves just to shut you up. I am still, Lily, I'm still having this problem. Did you do what I tell you, to, what I told you to do? No, I didn't have the heart to do it. Well, there's your fucking problem. Lily, uh, how do I get uh, a handle on these content droughts? Are you actually fucking working on a script right now? No, there's your fucking problem. I don't have very, uh, very uh, detailed and uh, and unique insight. I spot the obvious. It's like you got a hole in the wall. Oh, that's nothing. No, that's something. That's a problem that needs to be fixed. Yeah, I, I, um, well, Josh is plan is uh, planning out quote unquote his ne- his next uh, round of in um taking too seriously videos and he asked me to collab with him on a uh, uh, gauntlet of fire and like the first thing I did was write up an introduction where I lampshaded the fact that it's been almost a year since gauntlet of fire came out and he's only just now getting to it see if I were edit if I were editing editing that I would totally just shoehorn in a scene where I just walk over to Josh who has been asleep for very long and I just kick him that's basically what I did. What, what I've wrote in the script. You're the dragon. You're supposed to be the one that's hibernating. Oh, you're asleep because you're waiting for him to move. He gave me he gave me this big studio to work in, and I've got like one project a month from him. I had I had to run it out and like paint paint dirty pictures of Celestia. Yeah, when we, uh, when Lizzie uh, when Lizzie starts uh, when Lizzie does the video she wants to make, we're gonna have a skit at the start where I let her work in my in the in the old Taking Too Seriously studio. And she just goes, well, isn't it being used? And I just say, look, the, the guy who films in here hasn't been in here in, like, a fucking year, so. Yeah, this whole thing is just kind of reminding me of, oh, yeah, I have, like, two scripts that I want to write, and I should probably get to those. <laughs> I think one, one, one of them was completed. It was just, like, the, uh, it was the, it was the, um... It was recording the audio that's uh, that's been a difficulty. Yeah, I need to come over to your place so you can smack me in the back of the head when I'm not loud enough. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, for those of you listening at home, uh, Lizzie's been trying to uh, record a video for a while now, but she's got a very big problem uh, speaking loudly into the microphone, and so she's always recording uh, like this, and so it's n- it's it's impossible. And of course, when I've got to do the actual uh, processing of the audio. Uh, the end result just sounds like this all the fucking time. And I've been telling her, it's like, Lizzie, speak up. She'll send me a test recording and she's whispering. All right, stop whispering. Speak louder. And she'll tend to send me another test recording. It's the exact same fucking tone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not a very loud person and I try to be mindful of my roommates because one of them will get mad at me. Well, I mean, like the way you're the way you're speaking right now is fine. Like that would be fine. But you don't do that. When you get onto into an actual recording, it's just, you just become very quiet, and it's like you're trying really hard not to be heard, and you need to just stop giving a shit about what your roommates think of you. If I could let you borrow my naturally loud and obnoxious voice, I would. Yeah. Uh, look, honestly, like, th- th- this kind of thing would take maybe ten minutes to record. I think your roommates can handle a little bit of noise during that time. Yeah. So it's like, you're being too loud! Fuck you! Yeah, um... On the subject of like writing stuff, like writing for writing scripts and just not getting to them, I have like 20 million different ideas for stories and drawings and just stuff that I want to get to, but for whatever reason, I just don't have the time or I'm working on something else. I'm just, I am very like scatterbrained and ADD about my own creative process. I've been working hard to get that fixed, but you know. Oh yeah, me too. I have so much work to do for school. It's not 
hard work, it's just a lot. So by the time that I'm done, all I want to do is play Stardew Valley or watch Jacksepticeye or draw. Yeah, I do that all the time. Well, I mean, you can watch Jacksepticeye and draw at the same time. Oh yeah, that's what I've been doing. Multitasking is a is a very is a very important skill. I mean, there's a lot of my work that I can do at the same time, but I mean, I just schedule myself out. I mean, I've got a weekly schedule. I mean, I've got a weekly schedule. So I mean, as long as I get the thing I'm supposed to do done today, then I'm fine the rest of the day. It's like on Monday I write the in a minutes. On Tuesday I record the in a minutes. On Wednesday I edit one in a minute. On Thursday I edit the other one, and on Friday I record I record the podcast, and then on Saturday I edit the podcast. None of those things takes a full eight hours to do, and so I basically have the rest of the day to do whatever the fuck I want, which is usually work on uh, work on the next glass of water. Which I need to get to. Or talk to me. Yeah, or to, or or, uh, or talk to Lizzie. I've been trying to cut back on the video calls with uh, with Lizzie because they can go on for like eight, nine, ten hours, and I just I lose a lot of time in that. But I mean, it's like keep the video calls to like very, very short, like maybe two or three hours at the at a time at the most. But um, yeah, this really just comes back to good time management. I mean, basically, uh, I mean, Steven Universe's content droughts are Cartoon Network's doing. It's very obvious. There is no way uh, that they are not ordering a season at a time. Otherwise, Cartoon Network is showcasing to be fucking stupid. And I'm surprised that they're still in business. But in the case of YouTubers, it's just a matter of time management. It's just like actually setting aside time to work on something and actually fucking sticking to it. Like, Silver's big problem is that he seems to save everything for panels. And then he's off to every convention, and it seems there's a new convention every other week. Josh's problem is that he's streaming all the fucking time, and he's just not working on well, it. Any, not any oh, not anymore. anymore. Not anymore. He can't. He can't stream? Yeah, he, he's at college. He can't stream on their internet. Oh, all right. Well, I mean, well, for a while, the big problem was that he's just streaming all the time, and he's never not streaming. And he just need to actually sit down and just fucking do something, even if it's just putting in an hour every day. You can get a lot of work done in an hour, in, in an hour if, you just, if you just fucking move. I can write six in a minute in an hour. If it's for Star vs. the Forces of Evil or Steven Universe, that one hour, six are done. That's three weeks worth of, vi of videos written, ready to go. It takes a certain resolve to just get your ass in gear. The desire to procrastinate is like so heavy and it seems to be romanticized. And ugh, I hate to be one of the, I hate to turn into one of those YouTubers who uh, scapegoats tup. I'd hate to turn into one of those YouTubers who scapegoats Tumblr, but I have noticed on Tumblr a lot and that it's just a whole bunch of, I really should go, it's like at 7, uh, at uh, 10 p.m. I really should go to bed at 4 a.m. I haven't gone to bed. And I'm just thinking, why? Go to bed then. If you say at 11 p.m. I should really go to bed, go to fucking bed. Turn off the fucking computer, go to fucking bed. I should really get some writing done. And then don't, and then they just don't do it. I've noticed a lot of writers on uh, Tumblr uh, are claiming like massive writer's block. Oh, I just can't get any writing done. And it's not, and I, I've spoken to a few of these people. It's not a matter of writer's block. It's not a matter of just sitting there and just like, you come up with nothing. They just don't bother. They'll have the document open for like a minute and then boom, they're off playing, uh, fuck, what's a game Tumblr likes? Undertale or some shit. They just don't bother. They get distracted so easily. They don't sit down. They don't focus. They don't actually bother to do any work because apparently, because it's just, you get more stimulation from doing literally anything else. And if most of these people would just sit down and just fucking buckle down even for just an hour a day and actually like do some fucking work, wouldn't have this problem. It's one of the reasons why on good stuff, the big thing I prioritize over everything else is a release schedule because there's no point in pointing an audience to a channel that has nothing for three months at a time. Why? I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm not fucking promoting you. I've had people ask me, it's like, hey, can you put me on good stuff? Dude, your last video was a fucking year ago. No, I'm not putting, promoting you on good stuff. Get out of here. Get the fuck out of my face. Quit wasting my time. I think we've said everything that we can say on this topic at this point. Yeah, I think uh, when it comes to this stuff, I like I'm the I'm the most experienced because I, I like I, I'm in this same industry, and I have people always asking me for advice on this all the fucking time, and it's what pisses me off. It's like I'll tell people, look, I can't help you. Your problem is you just refuse to do it and you make excuses. Move, move me. This stuff should not, th th this stuff does not take long to make. Uh, people on YouTube, and this is like a myth I need to dispel, and it's why I'm going on this exact same topic for Glass of Water this week. Although I may put it off until next week. I don't know. So I'm going on this exact same topic, is the fact that 
people have this idea that videos, that even five minute videos take an, an, an extraordinarily large amount of time to make. They don't. They, like a glass of water for me, people will say, oh, well, you do this as a full time job. So of course you can do it fast. Glass of water takes three hours to make. From recording to editing, that's three hours. That's it. The writing may take a couple of sittings, but even then that's maybe another two or three hours in total. It does not take long to make. It's just a matter of finding the topic and actually getting the video done. Most people, they're not spending a large, like Silver's not spending hours and hours and hours pouring over after the fact. He's just not. He's off at his day job, understandable, and then he's flying off to every convention under the sun. He works, and I've, I've seen his assets. I've seen the, the puppet files. His editing is extremely inefficient. He could get this all, all done out a lot faster if he could just be bothered to do it. That was, that was, the, there was a lot of periods of me just very, very angrily ranting about basically people more popular than me, uh, being less professional than me. Oh, you're just jealous. I'm not jealous. I am not, I work, ve I work very hard. I may live paycheck to paycheck, but I do, I work very hard. And people have said that is what they appreciate about me, that I work very professionally, I work very hard, and what would be a typical amount of production time for another person is for me, flat out unacceptable. And I've had a lot of patrons say, like, that's what they appreciate most about me. That I have a schedule, and I keep to it. And if I have to br and if I have to break that schedule for any reason, I'll generally tell people, look, there's not gonna be a video, like, there's not gonna be a video this week. I used to have 3 a.m. rambles for that, to just say, hey, there's not gonna be any videos this month. I'm not jealous! Don't tell these lies about me, I'm not jealous! Yes, Lily, you're very this professional. This is a very professional attitude I have right now! This is very professional! Very professional!